Hello, folks, and welcome to Local Chat. This is episode 20. Can you believe it? It is also May 20th, 2021. We're just full of 20s today. What we're not full of is Ian Gibson because his power cut out right before we started this. It was incredible. And also, <laughs> gone but not forgotten uh, is Ian Gibson. But joining us, Jake Terrio. Jake, how are you? I'm as well as can be expected under the current socio-political situation <laughs> we're living in. <laughs> I love the current socio-political excommunion we're living in. Um, we, uh, we have a lot to talk about today and a lot more to talk about later in the show. But first, we got to talk about what we have been playing. And Jake, I'm going to start with you because there's no one else to start with but me. And I got to start with somebody. So what have you been playing this week? Good, sir. Yeah. Well, my, uh, my dog has been watching me play a lot of uh, new Pokemon Snap, <gasps> Ooh. which I didn't actually realize that that's what the real title was. Um, I thought it was like in my head, I was like, oh, Pokemon Snap 2 is coming out soon. <laughs> and then it came out. I was like, oh, it's called New Pokemon Snap. So <laughs> if they make a sequel to this. What's it going to be? A Pokemon where the E is a three? Or is it going to be newer Pokemon Snap? You, you can't, but that's you can't been trust Nintendo. Very fun. Just No, you can't. It's just, they're wild cards. But it's very fun. It's very chill. It's very, you know, because it's on rails. You just have to worry about moving the camera, getting your snaps, throwing fruits at the Pokemans, um, waking them up with an annoying flute melody it's real um, good so as someone who hasn't played any pokemon snap i know it is picture taking but how wh why why are you taking pictures of pokemon and what what benefit does that give the world i can't remember what the plot of the waffle please oh my goodness um I can't remember what the plot of the N64 version was, um, but this is your essentially like a biologist, like a like a wildlife researcher, and so mm -hmm. you you get brought to this new region, and the professor's like, "Hey, here's a camera. We need pictures of Pokemon for um, the Pokedex, so that we can." you know, keep track of all the Pokemon that live in this region. And so that's essentially it. You're just going around for Pokemon's National Geographic Association, essentially, snapping pics of all the Pokemon. Um, and there's a point system, like, based on, you know, the size of the Pokemon in the shot. Is it facing you? Is it doing something interesting? Um, which is obviously, like, when you're gamifying photography, you have to do something like that. But I kind of wish you could... Like, there was a little more leeway on, like, the framing. You know, like, because I've gotten some shots that I think are, like, cool shots and stylized shots, but it's because, like, something's, like, at the edge of the frame or kind of, like, there's, like, tasteful foreground elements. And um, the professor doesn't like that. He doesn't try like again. it at all. Do it better. I, so, it, does it seem... Uh, I'm you assuming... Know any Leibowitz. <laughs> does it seem to, like, uh, change it better than it did... Or not change it. Does Professor Oak seem to like assign points better than it did in the original one? I'm assuming technology has advanced for uh, photography. I, it's been a hot minute since I've played OG Pokemon Snap, so I can't necessarily say. Um, but it's also not Professor Oak. It's Professor Mirror, and he's got like a weird like chin strap beard. Um, Mirror? He's, like a mirror that I you look into? I do not care for him. M-I-R-R-O-R. -R. Yeah. Why? Like a reflective surface. That's a dumb name. I don't know. I I don't yeah. I don't like this information that you've given me. So um is it it's on rails still, right? Like you're in a cart or something? It's not like open world. It's on yeah, it's it's on rails. There are no, there are a couple of the environments where you can, there's like a scan function and you can use it to 
pick like one of two routes that you'll go. Um, but it it's yeah, it's an on rails shooter, as it were. But you're shooting photography shooting, not uh not mass not murdering a safari, Pokemon. A hunting safari. <laughs> no. Oh. That'd be a very different game. <laughs> That'd be uh speaking of Pokemon um... Billionaire Simulator. <laughs> Speaking of shooters, there's another game on this list you've been playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I hopped back into Destiny 2 after a hot minute of not playing, and I'm I'm mad Ian's not here for this, because I've got <laughs> points to make. Um, oh, no. Uh, I had not played uh, since, I think, I stopped playing like a season before Beyond Light came out last September, um, mm -hmm. and I had not played Beyond Light or any of the seasons since then until, like, three weeks ago, like, right before the end of the last season. So I played the end of um, season of The Chosen, and now it's season of The Splicer. Ooh. Um, and it's interesting... I finally got to see all the stuff that got like sunset and you can't power up anymore. And I was like, wow, all my favorite guns are basically useless now. Waffle, you've got to stop, my friend. <laughs> Waffle um, loves his toys. But it's interesting. He loves it. He can't get enough of it. Because um, the last time I was on here and I talked about Destiny and we got to talk about the story and Ian made the remark of, you know, it's great when all the best stuff is attached to like a physical book you can buy later <laughs> than actually <laughs> in the game. Um, and they've... Destiny now, in the past three seasons since Beyond Light came out, season of The Hunt, season of The Chosen, and now season of The Splicer, it's basically um, delivering its narrative episodically. It's mm -hmm. taking like the, the whole arc of the season and delivering it, you a chunk of it every week. Um, so it's like eight, yes. sir. Um, it's like eight weeks in the season, and so there's eight little stories that play out over the course of the season that you can play in the missions and whatnot. Um, and it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Though now this season is uh, uh, Bungie's like, hey, remember all your favorite characters? They're racist now. <laughs> Wait, it's who are they good. racist against? Because this season... Well, so this season, um, if you remember, you may remember this because you and I did a review of Destiny 2 Vanilla mm -hmm. for Back for Game Inventory. Um, I don't know. remember if you remember, there was an adventure on Titan where you were following a fallen captain through the arcology. Yes. And it actually gave you, a. there was like a branching moment where it gave you a choice to let him go or kill him. Because wasn't he fighting a hive well, guy? And I guess could, canonically. You could and, choose. Yeah, and you could kill him or kill the hive guy. Um, canonically, I guess Bungie decided that he lived regardless of what you, the player, did. And so this character, Mithrax, this fallen captain, has appeared in a number of places since then. If he was in the Zero Hour mission, where you got um, Outbreak perfected. He's the one I in the, the basement, that, right? That you go to? Or not. Yeah, he was in the basement of the farm for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. And so now, he's back, um, basically rounding up the fallen diaspora, um, to be like, hey, let's not follow these, you know, these crazy warlords that we've been following for years and years. Let's just not do that. Try to rebuild our civilization. And so they have been given asylum in the last city. Um, and Ooh. of course, there are a number of NPCs who are a bit prickly about this. Um, and now they're racists. <laughs> Um, I am, um, but um, first of all, I, I want to. It's good storytelling. Sorry, I I know there's a slight delay between us, which is making this the most enjoyable conversation for everyone watching. Mm. But um, I was gonna say first of all, I almost wore that Destiny shirt today because I have 
That's the only moments of triumph I did, which is the shirt you're wearing. Oh, yeah. And then, <clears throat> second of all, I think that is super interesting, yeah. albeit a, like, sci-fi, um, I can't think there were, trope of having the aliens join the humans, and then everyone, there's always that one guy who's mm-hmm. like, how can we trust the aliens? Um, that sounds really exciting. I am a... Mm-hmm. A a destiny. I wouldn't say destiny apologist, but every time the DLC comes out, like when Beyond Light came out, I spent the sixty or seventy dollars it was for the whole thing, and I played about four hours of it, and I have not played Destiny since that Beyond Light release day. Um, so it is kind of mm-hmm. exciting to know that you uh you didn't play for a while, but you've come back and are enjoying this like episodic content because it honestly makes me want to go check it out. Um, cause that, that, that stuff sounds pretty neat. It is very cool. And the way they're doing it is, is kind of neat. Some of the activities are a bit more, um, uh, grindy than I think previously. Cause they're having to kind of, um, make it this, you know, come back they're tr- needing you to come back every week to get the story and they're trying to offer yeah. you something to do you know in the meantime um but uh the new transmogrification system is really neat i've been playing around with that a whole bunch um so you can you know you can pick your one set of armor that's got the really good stats but then you can make it look like any item that you've ever received over the course of the past Four years of Destiny Two. I feel like that gives maybe me we're coming up on the fourth way too. That like stresses me out. Like that gives me way too many options. Well, you are limited to a certain number of uh, transmog unlocks every mm. season. So okay, you can be like, I know what my favorites are. Unlock, 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 and then next season you can stress about what to unlock next. Okay, that that at least sounds... Um, That's all I've been playing. Sounds a little bit better. Well, good. I'm glad you've been playing video games, and I'm glad you're here to talk about them. Uh, Ian's not back yet, which means uh, <laughs> another moment of silence. Uh, I uh, Power's still out. Yeah, power's still out. He messaged me that he was working on a 3D print, uh, so I guess that has stopped uh, the poor guy. Uh, I've learned with printers that when it stops mid-print... They don't start up again because print, you know what? Printing technology is still stupid. My, I set up my new printer in this apartment and everything connects Mm -hmm. to it except for this computer. And I had to do like 50 different softwares and downloads to make this stupid computer print to it because I'm trying to make a freaking last crusade diary and I want to print it out and it's not working. Um, and it's very stressful. Um, but yeah. Okay. Rant over about printers. Rant started about what I've been playing. Um, Jake, you have not been on this program, so you don't know any of this, which means I get to enlighten you. I have been playing Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King, Uh because it is a good video game. And this all started because uh, Chris and I did the Will's first JRPG with Chrono Trigger. We're still working through it. Apologies for not doing an episode today, but I was tired from my COVID shot. Um, and that was too drip feed for me, so I decided to play another JRPG, because as many people know, it's the year of the JRPG for me. And um, so I I pulled out my 3DS, and magically my 3DS had the game on it, which is crazy. Uh, I must have bought it at some point. Um, and so I've been playing this game, it's very go- good. I-, I don't know what it is with Dragon Quest, um, but it's kind of like my Dwarf Fortress obsession where like I saw Dragon Quest and I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. And now I'm like mildly obsessed with it. And like, I think the slimes look really cool. I think some of the characters look way too anime for me, but it is Akira, Tori- Akira Toriyama. Is that- that's the Dragon Ball guy. Um, he's the one who designs all the characters for Dragon Quest. Um, anyway, so that I'm playing. Sounds right. Yeah, so I'm playing eight. Uh, it's really good. I'm 34 hours into it. Uh, about the 30 hour mark, it told me I was halfway. 
um, the guide I've been occasionally going back to check in on. Um, I, I, it's it's a little much having playing it on a. I have a big 3DS, but it still is like I just want to play it on a TV. Like I'm stuck on this tiny little screen. Um, it, it like it's not mm. cramping my hands, but it's just like ugh, I just I don't like holding it. Um, but that aside, the game is really good. It has a really good story. Those 34 hours have been very entertaining. I've learned a lot about JRPGs. I've learned what I like and don't like about JRPGs. Um, I've learned, like, that was a thing with Pokemon. Uh, besides the, I like the gameplay of Pokemon, but besides the fact that I kind of don't like Pokemon that much, um, I, uh, I was always confused with, like, defense mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and as someone who plays a lot of, who plays a lot of RPGs, I never use like potions and items and stuff because I always want to save them and I just brute force things because I'm a horrible person. Uh, mm -hmm. This game made me understand like, oh, I should stop and raise all the defenses of my characters before this next round of attack. Or I should try to lower the tension of the characters I'm fighting so they don't hit me as hard. And it's like, it's like unlocked a new portion of my brain that I'm not mm -hmm. like, it's so weird to discover because I've never played with this sort of power before so i'm really enjoying dragon quest 8 um currently on my personal game of the year list which is the games i've played in during the whole year it's probably close to number one it's really fun uh, like i said it's got a really good story and it, it, it kind of it's not a drip feed but like there's enough of it um that it really keeps you going and there's not too much grindy stuff which i was afraid of when i paused playing the game for like a month or two um but yeah besides that i'm 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 looking forward to i think after i finish it i'm gonna jump into either final fantasy 7 or dragon quest 11 which is on the series x which i think will be fun to uh play on the series x mm -hmm. um so that's my dragon quest tale i like dragon quest yeah. um I you go have you played? No, I was gonna say it's not a JRPG, but it is an R and an, I guess an ARPG in the style of a lot of those older ones. Because I know because I edited a thing about it. But have you played Battle Chasers Night War? No, I have not. That's um, what you call it. Yeah. Who's rumor was? It's it's for the Airship Syndicate. Yeah, folks, Airships. the Joe Mad turn-based but it's um they specifically made it um for i guess people of your original disposition who there's not really potions or spells or anything it's all just abilities and they designed it so that you would be forced to use you can't just brute force it you have to use your mana and your attacks and blah 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 oh it's, it's cool it's neat you should play it do i i feel like I feel like it's on Game Pass or something. It's somewhere I've seen cheap. Did Epic do a giveaway? Maybe no, something like that. It's, well, uh, they may have done it recently because I know it's it's on. I think everything, um, with maybe the exception of like the PS5, because I own it on PS4 and on Switch. Um, but uh, I feel like I always get that yeah. game confused in my head with Pyre. I know they're completely different, but I see them the same in my head. And I always mm. get, I, I think they came out around the same time when we were at Game Umentary. So I always like conflate them, even though I know they're completely different. And they both look really, really good. Yeah. I need to, I own Pyre because I bought the uh, Racial Injustice HIO bundle, which has like, I finally went and checked and it, like mm -hmm. i have this huge folder of games i just downloaded off of it uh oh, and uh God. i think pyre's one of those oh and a short hike which you had tweeted about is on there and i need to go play that Ooh, a short hike is really good yeah i started playing yeah. it uh and, i booted it up uh, daniel mullins the hex is on there oh i should play that um also Dor dorf dorf romantic is on there mm -hmm. but it's the beta version I, i'm not uh, this isn't anything against developers but when the full dorf romantic game came out they made a new itch.io post for it which i found kind of scummy 
but also Dorf Romantic's only like ten dollars, I think. But mm. it's kind of like they renamed it Dorf Romantic Prototype, and there were people complaining. Which honestly, if I'm an indie developer, I'm trying to get money anyway, mm. so kind of not that bad. Um, other games I've been playing, I talked about this at length last week. The Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance Remastered. Karen and I are playing through that. It's stupid fun. Um, it's it's literally just like up res to four not up well it's 4k now and they really didn't change much else and it's really funny and stupid to play and the guys grunt a lot and it's really funny uh and then i've been playing a butt ton of rim world um i like rim world it's a very good game i had a uh, about 40 mad squirrels attack today and that was kind of fun i had to defend against them and then I also got a guy who got, I think he got shot in the head, but his brain capacity is only at 40%. So I think I'm going to go try to buy him a new brain and try to do a surgery to get him a new brain. But um, I've been, uh, there's a subreddit called RimWorld Porn, which is all people's fortress bases, like screenshots. So it looks really nice. Um, and they're like... Mm -hmm. uh, all laid out and stuff so i keep looking at those and then i come back in game so now i'm like i'm like making like a half moon base with like a, a kill box entrance and all this sort of stuff uh and i'm i'm starting to like put some more emphasis on uh design and playing the game a little bit better and also using some mods uh because the mod support is crazy for that game people want more content so they're pumping it out and I still haven't bought the DLC for the game, which is like royalty and having kings and stuff. Uh, people are suspecting that there's a new DLC going to be announced because mm. the um, the developer ha hasn't posted a blog since I think September or October, and that's that's what they did the time before when they released a thing. So here's hoping, but uh, I'm not sure if mm. that's going to happen. But it would be nice. Uh, well, uh, Ian is still not back, which means he cannot talk about, uh, Outer Wilds or Mass Effect, which honestly I was truly looking forward to because I think, I think he's having a good time with Mass mm. Effect. I think he is. And he even put, he tweeted a screenshot Ooh. in the elevator Shame. saying like with the, with the crew. So I, I honestly think he's having a good time and I hate that he's not here to talk about it um so this happened to our baby boy <laughs> i know he's it's like he can learn the the amount of things he hates still surprises <laughs> me um it's just mm -hmm. it's incredible um i remember he's our in-house contrarian close to when we first met i had to explain to him the difference of me enjoying a movie and me thinking it's an actually good movie because he kept thinking I was saying movies were like cinematically good when I just meant like I enjoy watching them. Um, so that was a fun conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but enough about that. It's time to move on to the news, which means I get to play <laughs> the news theme, which I'm trying to open my foobar so I can see it. Here we go. Give us uh, that music. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? What is up news, everybody? There's a lot of news going on this week, and one up front that we should probably address because it was um, pretty big this week uh, was the IGN stuff with uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict going on right now. Uh, which is an awful thing. Innocent civilians dying is not a thing that should be happening. Um, so, uh, Jake, I don't know if you were paying attention to this at all, the, specifically the IGN stuff. Oh, I was. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, listen, I, this... It's spicy. Yeah. Um, when tragic things happen, it there's two kinds of people not really two kinds of people there's the people who are like hey what can we do to help blah blah blah, blah. And then there's a kind of people who say hey get your politics out of my video games which first of all shut up when bad things happen people cope with them in different ways and helping people is a way of coping with things so shut up uh so ign staff uh i 
I don't know if it was specifically the American IGN staff, but anyways, they posted an article linking to vetted charities for helping out Palestinians. Um, and then um, Ian... Ian, sorry. I say Ian because he's the one who posted it here, and I think he knows much more about this than I do. But I wanted to address it, even though he's not here. Um... So they posted this whole thing. Uh, the article noted Palestinian civilians are currently suffering in great numbers in Jerusalem, Gaza, and West Bank due to Israeli forces. Short post. Uh, it was similar to the post they did for COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, uh, the Asian American hate crimes. Um, and so they posted a bunch of stuff and then it, it went away. Basically disappeared. And then at 2.20... It like a couple it, hours. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was up for a good amount of time. And then at 2.20 in the morning, after it was deleted, there was a statement coming out saying, by highlighting only one population, the post mistakenly left the impression that we were politically aligned with one side. And this whole, like, sh like very vetted um, text and written out thing, not signed by anybody, and it was just like corporate speak. Yeah, it was very corporate speak, very uh, both sides, both to the troops, both sides, sort of thing. Um, and it it's not the. I mean, there's two two ways to look at it here. It's, it's not necessarily the fact that they took down a thing that seemed to be supporting one side over the other. I mean, that's a whole thing. But it was they did it without. It was this corporate overreach into journalism censorship that is like this huge thing uh ign employees eventually they wrote a whole letter with like i was scrolling for quite a bit there were a lot of people who signed it um it was just mm -hmm. absolutely crazy that it was like a blunder on so many sides because it was a blunder on taking down an article that was literally just helping people and also censoring your Mm -hmm. the largest one of the largest gaming websites <laughs> like what is whose decision was that at t and at 2 20 in the morning where you know you're you're trying not to get caught um J jake do you have anything you want to add to this yeah. i mean it's just it's i I underst I like I know why it happened because there is a long historical tradition of especially Western nations support for the nation of Israel. Um, and so I think there's just a lot of like I don't know. It's 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 inserting politics from a different angle. Of being like, oh, we can't even say anything. We can't provide help to these people who are having war crimes perpetrated against them. Because yeah. that would appear like we're taking a side that historically is not a side anybody this side of the Atlantic has ever yeah. taken. Um, but it's uh, real stupid. Yeah, it was. it was dumb bad move very very bad move um just as an update here the um ign employee statement is an update for this article and that they're hoping to have a meeting with management by the end of the week um today being thursday this article being published uh on the 17th which was monday um and i don't remember when that statement came out uh yeah it's just a lot of crazy stuff listen help people just help people I don't care who you are. I just want to help you. And I don't... Don't, don't silence people. people. Don't bomb people. Don't kill people. Be nice to people. Video games are good. Video games are a way to reach out to other people and help them. So don't be a dick and say, get your politics out of my video games. Get your video games out of your butt and help people. Okay? That's my statement, and I'm standing by it. Um... Now, Jake, who Put do you side with? T-shirt. No. <laughs> um, okay, let's move uh, on to some lighter topics. Uh, we all know who Waffle sides with, so we won't mention that. But uh, moving on, uh, Jake, is there anything specifically or specifically 
uh, you would like to talk about in the news this week? Specifically. Um, there were only, uh, the, I, the only things that I added to this was uh, tangentially um, by way of Destiny 2 news. I don't know if you read the This Week at Bungie that came out today. Um, but Did I guess, not. I think maybe at the start of this season, so last week, they put out the patch to for the new season content, and some people were noticing, "Hey, did they enable crossplay?" Um, and Bungie was like, "Oops, we did. That's going to go <laughs> away in a bit before we formally launch it again." Um, so next weekend they're going to do a public test of crossplay. So Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, and Stadia on a special uh, strike playlist. Um, Ooh, so it's coming, and they're testing it. So we might be able to play Destiny together. Oh, we can finally future finally do our our Destiny raid stream that I've been wanting to put together for mm -hmm. millennia. Yeah, I guess because Vault of Glass is coming back tom oh, tomorrow or I like Vault of Glass. I think it might be tomorrow. That's exciting. Yeah, the OG. Um, that's cool. Um, and then I'm excited. something that I just, yeah, I stumbled across on Twitter today, a video of people in, uh, Call of Duty Warzone dropping into Nakatomi Plaza. And I guess there's like some sort of like eighties action movie bit that Call of Duty is doing. Where they're just like adding in stuff from eighties action movies. The the Warzone map has been because of uh, uh, Black Ops Cold War. They re they made the map the eighties, like they brought it mm -hmm. back to the eighties. Yeah, and so you, now you can, you know, welcome to the party, pal. You're oh, you can like Plaza. actually go into not. I didn't realize that. Sorry, I thought they just added because yeah. I know they it's added uh, what's eight. his face, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, Willis. Um, wow, mm -hmm. Bruce Hornsby. That's crazy. It's a different musician. <laughs> Thank but God. yeah, I because I have not kept up with um, Warzone news at all because it's not really my bag. But then I'm like, what? Die Hard? Where did this come from? Yeah, Karen plays it Come out to the pretty coast. much every night. She's very good at it. It's scary. Um, I just want my racist space aliens. <laughs> yeah, that's all Jake cares about is his racist space aliens. Uh, speaking of uh, racist space aliens, needs. Uh, speaking of being nice to uh, people who are in need... Other blatantly obvious things that have happened this week is the fact that Starfield will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. Because, no duh, you idiots. Um, I mean, Microsoft didn't... What did you think was going to happen when Microsoft <laughs> bought all these companies? Right, it's like people are getting up... It's like, shut... I mean, with the bonus side of Xbox having bought Bethesda is that you know it'll come to PC, which with Sony... At least a while ago, you wouldn't have been so certain with. Um, but yeah, of course, mm. Starfield is going to come to stupid Xbox and PC and not to Sony. Um, there was also a leaked screenshot that came out that looked pretty good. Uh, so I'm just trying to get all the Starfield news out of the way. There was a huge thing today on Twitter about people saying that Starfield is, quote, basically done and that Bethesda is just waiting to release it. To which a lot of people responded with, you have no idea how the video game industry works if you think a company will be done with a project and then just yeah. sit on it. <laughs> which is wild. That uh, still from L.A. Noir X to Doubt. That yeah. guy being like... <laughs> it's like... Uh, and it's these... It's the person who kept saying it was like some YouTuber, which we're just some YouTuber, but we're not purporting to know video game news like mm -hmm. specific inside rumors um but both jason schreier and a couple and of the reputable did, sources cite our sources yes which I, my sources i'm citing is jason schreier and reputable people on twitter uh saying that 
it'll probably launch in 2022. I even saw someone say they should do February 22nd, 2022, just like Skyrim was 11, 11, 11, 20, 11, 11. Uh, no, so it'd be 2-2. 2-2-2-2. 2-2-2-2. 2-2-2-2. 2-2-2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2. 2-2.
I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's okay. I was trying not to call I you. Played that. Wind Waker. <laughs> that game's awesome. I I want to play Wind Waker, but I bought the GameCube version a couple years ago. But I know the Wii U remaster is really good because it like cut down a lot Stage of theme. uh bullshit. And I I also have the Wii U HD version of Twilight Princess that I want to play. Um, I should really go get my Wii U. That is what the universe is telling me right now. I should go get my Wii U and play video Bring games it on home, it. bud. I've been watching Giant Bomb content, old Giant Bomb content, and they in the in the Giant Bomb era, I'm watching uh, Mario Maker One just came out, so they're playing it a bunch. And in my brain, I'm like, I should go play Mario Maker Two now that that's out. Um, so you know. Wii U, man. Great console. Uh, anyways, yeah. I'm going to... Mm. What's the other thing I want to talk about here? Uh, let's do some quick hits like Ian likes to do. Uh, Valheim has sold over 6.8 million units so far, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Embracer Group says they are expecting 1 million to 1.2 million more copies before the end of June, which would bring the lifetime uh, to upwards of 8 million that's just, I mean, congratulations. Valheim is a fantastic game. Uh, I finally just canceled Can you the do server. A quick Google, how many units has Minecraft sold? I, I need like a, something to see side by side. Uh, Minecraft units sold as of, why would it start with the old first? As of 2020, oh, one sales, 200 million. But this Ooh, is also okay. this is separating out mobile, which is ninety three million as of twenty eighteen. Oh, and then yeah, Minecraft Chinese edition okay. is four hundred million, million on top still of that. Nothing to sneeze at. No, not at all. Mm. That's because um, you know communism. Everybody gets it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I there was another Free thing Minecraft. I I saw about. Like people saying like, oh, selling it for three million is a failure. Like all these like armchair Twitter journalists, and then it was like real video game journalists being like, N no, I like the an indie no. game selling six point eight million units. Like they, th that's insane. That's Do you know how much m money those people are rolling in right yeah. now? Oh. I had that if way. I if I sold three million of any one thing that I've made, that would be bonkers. Oh yeah, I mean your book's gonna sell like three million. That's wild. So we all know that. Seriously, um, doubt it. <laughs> uh, next up, I um, sorry, quick hits here, quick hits. Sonic the Hedgehog two movie plot was leaked by a copyright listing. <laughs> Oh, I haven't even seen the first one yet, but here we go. Um, here, do you want me to read the synopsis for you? Do you want to close? Do you want to go to your mind palace and hear this, Jake? <laughs> I am would be more concerned for somebody who might watch this or listen to this later and then be like, I can't believe I was waiting for that. I can't believe they leaked it. <laughs> um, so let's just keep it a secret. You know, I, so they can go track it down if they want to know. I will say, uh, no, I'm not going to read this, but saying movie plot leaked is not, this is like a synopsis. It's generous. It's, it's, it's like the synopsis of a trailer. Like it's the synopsis of what the movie is going to be about. It's nothing mm. specific. So I, like when they said movie plot leaked, I figured I'd be reading like this mm. happens, this happens, this happens. But it's just like, oh, it's 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 like it's yeah. like an old VHS thing with like it's the journey of two. Like it's literally just a tiny synopsis that has. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just interesting. The guy who posted it was like. Hey, I don't know if anyone's Sonic posted this yet, but here's the copyright information for <laughs> Sonic. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, Overwatch 2 moving to 5v5 instead of 6v6. I don't know. I don't care. So, suck it, Overwatch. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, 
will change the meta, but yeah. Oh no, my meta! It's gonna get changed. Listen, I just want Diablo re restoked, whatever that's called, and they haven't announced the release date yet. Diablo two re re hellfired. Something. Um, I'm excited for that because I have not played Diablo two. Diablo four come out. Man, I. They announced that a while ago. Uh, Karen and I playing Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, which is just a Diablo game, is making me think that I should play through Diablo three with Karen. I think you can local that game, and that's kind of exciting. Um, Diablo 3 is really good, which makes me want Diablo 4 even more. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, I think that's the news, folks, which I realized in the video version, I never switched over to the news thing, so sorry about that. Uh, so since we're done with the news, it means it's time, Jake. It is time to go to the subpixel rating system boom you know it you love it can you link me to that i don't yes. know I... uh oops i literally hit done instead of copy uh nope so uh we're just going to add one game today uh because just one yeah, I, do you have any game in mind? I guess I should ask. I, I would, I would more like you to I add a game than me to add a from game from the start. Uh, um, I'm looking around at my stacks on stacks on stacks. Um, okay, I'm looking at the list. It's a banger of a list. I know. The battle to beat Brink. <laughs> I don't really... Okay. Uh, hmm. um, this is really a conundrum. Oh, I... Um, hmm. I, I have a game if, oh, if you don't think of um, one, but... Let me hear yours, and then I'll say whether or not I'm gonna put mine on there. I was I was gonna default and say we could do Lego Racers. Oh, I was thinking about that earlier, but uh, okay. So we, we my, don't have to. My pitch was gonna be Firewatch. Ooh. But, um, I I would go with either of those. Ooh, I like Firewatch. Ooh. Me too. Big fan. I have actually it's over there, Firewatch art. Um oh I oh you know what I do have. Oh. Boom. That's the record. Yeah, it's the record. That's some exquisite graphic design. That Ali Moss. Well, I, I don't know if Ali Moss did the cover for the record, but Ali Moss yeah. did a ton of the art on that game. And it's just gorgeous. Rich Zomer, Sissy Jones, some of the best voice acting in the oh, history yeah. of video gaming. Um, I, I'm not going to put this all the way back in because I'm pushing I, okay, my other so records out. Do you want to. Um, yes. Uh, I, let's do Firewatch. Firewatch is a good idea. Coin so we can. No, I'm fine with Firewatch. So if you okay. want to tell me your reasoning, your defensive Firewatch, and then tell me where you would put it, put it on this list. On this list, I would put it between Mirror's Edge and Doom 1993. Um, I think that's where I would put it. Um, Reasoning, I mean, what it may lack in, like, gaminess, like, it's not an action game. I think it, it was the first game I played that fell into that, like, walking simulator type thing, which I think is really something of a pejorative term, even though it may be moderately accurate to mm. describe what the game is. Um, there... 
the experience of playing it for the first time, I remember watching the trailer. I invited a friend over and we played through it in in two days. We were we were gonna play through it. We weren't sure how long it was gonna be, and we were playing it. And then we got to a good stopping point, and he was like, "I'm gonna come over tomorrow, and we're gonna we're gonna play more of this," um, because it was just so captivating, um, and the story was so, um, engrossing, um, and obviously very personal to the the developers and the folks who wrote it. Um, yeah. But so I, the, a very different game from I think most of what's on this list. Um, but I would put it, yeah, I would put it between Mirror's Edge and Doom, so it would be the new number five. Okay. Uh, you know, I thought I was going to come in with this and argue with you. Uh, I do want to say I discovered that game uh, while I was hanging out at a friend's house, and we were, like, playing video games together, and I was like, oh, what's this? So I downloaded and started playing it, and I, I feel bad because they were like, oh, we're going to go play this other game, and I was like, no, I'm good. I'm just going to stay here and play Firewatch. And uh, I was, I, it's not like I did it the whole night, but I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be hanging out with my friends, but I can't stop playing this really good game right now. Uh, I think that game had the right yeah. amount of, like, visual style, wholeheartedness, gr- great voice acting, and also, like, a mystery to it that, like, felt supernatural and weird mm-hmm. and, like, kind of, like, and just, like, came together really well. And thinking about it now i actually don't remember the ending to that game and i think that just means i have to go play it again which is probably a good idea yeah, so i will say like the whole time my friend and i were playing it we were it was like unraveling as this like yeah like this mystery like someone's out in the woods stalking you something like like a suspense thriller and then it kind of takes like a hard right at the very end um, to be something a little more subtle, yeah, and mellow. And my friend and I were both like, "Oh, oh, okay. yeah, it's this like really cool." But it was, I think, I we I have a let's play of it on our channel, and it's at a horrible frame rate because we we're playing it on my Mac. Um, <laughs> but I remember at some point during that first bit where it's. Um, because it starts the first five minutes are basically like a text adventure and you you punch in all the responses um in between little vignettes of you traveling to the firewatch lookout where the game like starts and yeah i remember at some point during one of those um like choose your own adventure segments my friend was like this is gonna hurt i can tell um and uh it was really good yeah Oh, I think I, I definitely do want to play through it. So uh, as as far as this list, I I think I might agree with you. I think Firewatch would go above um, Mirror's Edge and below Doom 1993. Um, which I realize now we can do that because we're the only two people here. Uh, and they can't mm-hmm. stop us, Jake. So next week, Ian's gonna come. He's gonna come see this list and be like, "What? Firewatch? Nice it was, you know, here. it was average at best. The way they made their characters um, talk just pissed me off, and I, I couldn't even, fi- couldn't even finish the game. I played it for thirty minutes, couldn't even finish it, couldn't even finish it. Um, that's my Ian impression. <laughs> We should do a sketch show. Oh uh, yeah, Extra Life twenty twenty. We'll do or twenty twenty one. We'll do sketches of each other. We'll each play each other. Oh, that's we'll a nightmare. We'll do let's plays as the other people. My the worst thing about not having the archive of last year's Extra Life is, uh, there was a great time when Chris, me, and Ian read out a scene from metal gear in the voices and it was really good and i'm so sad it doesn't exist that is too bad um god it's got to be somewhere youtube has to have it oh it was so good they have it we just have to knock on the front door of their uh their building and wherever it is in i can't remember if it's in the bay area or in la but like, yeah. we know this is here. 
give it to us. Pissed. Uh, great. So, uh, man, I don't want to read this whole list. Uh, new number five is Firewatch. Uh, number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Factorio. Ugh. Number four, Doom 1993. Number five, Firewatch. Number six, Mirror's Edge. Number seven, Ghost of Tsushima. Number eight, Control. Number nine, Mass Effect 2. Number 10, Prey 2017. Number 11, Shadow of the Colossus. Number 12, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Number 13, Horizon Zero Dawn. Whew. Number 14, Battlefield 1943. Number 15, Middle Dash Earth, Colon Shadow of Mordor. Number 16, The Outer Worlds. Number 17, Halo 4. Number 18, Fallout 4. Number 19, No Man's Sky. Number 20, Daisy. Number 21, Donkey Kong 64. Number 22, Break. Number 23, Kingdom Hearts 3. And the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel, is Cyberpunk 2077. Folks, that's been a show. And in a year, you're really going to have to figure out a better way to do that. Oh. Whoo. I'll have to shorten everything. I'll just I'll just do all the odds one week and do all the evens the next week. Um, <clears throat> let's play the outro music because we're gonna get the heck out of here because it's hot in this room and I would like to go to bed. Jake Terrio, thank you for joining me this week, sir. You're welcome. You're great. I like having you on this show um because you're part of subpixel and Thanks. you make good videos yeah. um folks if you would like to see any of our video content i am legally 25 percent of subpixel <laughs> you legally are it's it's scary but he's not joking he legally is we can't get rid of him as much as we've tried uh our, our assassin waffle just won't kill him he's fallen in love um Folks, if you want to see our hot, hot content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring straight to our YouTube channel. We can check out our hot, hot content. You can also search Subpixel Streams for our Stream Archive channel or Subpixel Shorts for our Short Archive channel, which is all of our TikTok-y stuff that we post there because we didn't want to flood up the buying channel. Um, you can follow us on all the social medias at Subpixel Team. Uh, if you want to email us, or email the show, you can email me, will at subpixelfilms.com. Send me an email and I will read it live on uh, live on stream. We'll answer your emails. I don't know. We can have an email section if people emailed. Who knows? Also, go to anchor at anchor.fm is where we're hosting our podcast now. Uh, and check all that stuff out. Uh, Jake, thank you for joining me this week. Uh, it was a blast. Ian, sorry you couldn't make it. Sorry your power went out, but we will see you next week. And until then, have a lovely, lovely time. Goodbye, everyone.